All right, this is my review of the uh, Daytona Tactical AR-15 rifle kit. This kit cost me $419 plus $20 to ship it. It is chambered in a 1 to 7 twist, 223 wild with a stainless steel barrel. Um, let's see. I guess I'm just going to get right into uh, the pros and cons. I'm going to start with the good things first because that's just who I am. Well, the good thing is it was $419, and this was during the 855 ammo crisis there. It happened a few months back. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but you should be. So basically that meant as soon as everybody realized that the ammo was possibly going to be banned, everybody freaked out, price went up. Everything went up. You couldn't find rifle kits. Palmetto didn't have anything for less than 500 bucks, and places like Classic Firearms didn't have anything either. Everything was gone. Daytona Tactical was the only place I could find. I did a little bit of research on the internet and of course all I found was a bunch of negativity. Typical, you know, if you aren't buying a, a Daniel Defense or a BCM, you know, well then you're just a piece of shit. So, you know the attitude of people anymore. So anyway, the price, $419, $20 to ship it. Well, let's see. Some other good things are the fit and finish with the lower. Man, it fits like it was made for this. The lower I have here is an EP Armory, EP80. Um, yeah, the guys that got nailed by the ATF a couple years ago. Well, I thought I'd show them some love once they, uh, they got their new lowers back out. Put my order in. Happy camper. Uh, let's see. I really like the way the trigger feels in it. The trigger pull is nice. It's a little heavy, but it's a combat trigger. It's to be expected. It's not great, but it's nice. Now, this coming from an AK guy, any trigger feels good compared to an AK. <laughs> okay, that being said, there are a few more good things, but I'm going to get on to the, to the negative, to the cons. Well, let's see. The first thing is, is... The uh, the rifle kit came with parts bag to con uh, with bags to complete your lower, like most rifle kits do. In the picture, it shows the yellow bag and the green bag and the red bag and the black bag, and you think, oh wow, this is a CMMG kit. Cool. It's not. It's fake. It looks the same, but it's not. You get it apart. You know, once you get it out of the bag and you start tearing everything down, and yeah, or taking the bags and opening them up. Excuse me. And you'll look in and you'll realize, hmm, this is not set up like a CMMG kit because they, you know, have it set up like, you know, here's your, your uh, let's see, here's, here's your hammer springs and your hammer, that'll be one part, you know, and then here's your, your trigger springs and pin and that'll be another part. And it wasn't like that. It was in miscellaneous bags. It didn't make any sense. But I figured it out. It's not rocket science. It's an AR. So let's see. With that being said... Another negative was it was missing the front takedown take down spring and detent. So this right up here does not have a spring and detent to hold that pin in place. Not a big deal. I don't really care. But it was missing the spring and detent. It did come with an extra spring, but it wasn't the spring that fit in here or in the rear or in the uh, the selector detent or any of that it just was some goofy oddball spring that did not fit anything in, at least in my lower and maybe it'd be different in yours I don't know oh uh, let's see something else the stock is loose this knockoff stock back here is really loose and sloppy it rattles like hell and which I guess isn't a big deal but if you know if you don't want a stock that rattles well you're gonna have to spend a little more money and buy you a better rear stock or uh, a better butt stock. Um, I threw a little bit of electrical tape on it, which I know how horrible, but at least it doesn't rattle and slop and bang and flop all over the place and sound like a plastic gun like the rest of it. But that's my fault because my lower is plastic. So it tends to echo everything because it is plastic. When I first got it, put it together, the bolt and, and the uh, bolt carrier and everything was all assembled. It was hard as hell to cycle this thing. I mean, it, it felt like somebody threw a handful of sand in it. Just real gritty, real grunchy, crunchy, hard to move. Wasn't really all that enjoyable to play with. 
But after sitting downstairs and, you know, in the basement, watch, you know, in the man cave watching some movies and just sitting there cycling the thing like, you know, some crazy ass drunken Rambo on a, on a retardation spree, cycle, cycle, cycle 5,000 fucking times and it loosened up and now it's nice and it feels pretty decent. Actually, it feels better than a couple of the Bushmasters that I played with at Dunham's and uh, I'd call that a good thing because those were $1,100 guns and I can buy two and a half of these for the same price. Uh, let's see something else. The selector is loose as shit. Now I don't know if it's because of my lower, because I it because it is polymer and everything broke out when I drilled it. Um, but the uh, the selector flops all over the place. Now it's not loose up and down, but it just flops that way. I don't know if I'm even in screen. If I'm not, I apologize. Not a big deal, it's just something I've noticed. This is my first AR, so I'm not going to stand here and say, Oh, well, I've got 30 years of being in the middle. No, I don't know shit about ARs. I can just tell you that that selector flops up and down. And it's something that bugs me. So I just thought I would make a note of it. It may bug others. You may say, Oh, well, they're all like that. Oh, okay, well, then I'm just an idiot. It proves my ignorance. That's not a problem. This is a review from an amateur two amateurs. This is not, you know, I'm not trying to tell, you know, Military Arms Channel, hey, this is, you know, this is what the AR that you want. That's not what I'm doing here. I mean, if that's what you're thinking, then you totally missed the point. You know, we're talking about a $400 rifle kit. We're not talking about a $1,000, you know, $1,500, $2,000 quality rifle. We're talking about a gun that shoots bullets. How about that? God, I hate that terminology, but so anyway, um, let's see. It could be the fact that I have horrible shitty sights on it, or it could be something in the way that it, the uh, the upper was assembled, but it shoots way to the right. My rear sight is jacked all the way over to the right, almost as far as it'll go. And it's accurate once I adjusted the sight way over, but I have a feeling it's more so to do with my sights than the rifle. The rear sight was a $13 Amazon shitty cheapy. You know, what can you expect? Uh, the front sight is a UTG low profile to go with the high gas block. Speaking of the high, high profile gas block, I don't like the fact that there is no place to mount slang on this thing. I should have paid attention to that before I bought it, but at the time I could not find the A2 style front sight. That's what I really like. I prefer the original style sight. I don't like this huge gas block with the massive hole in it. And, I mean, I don't exactly understand what that's for. But I can tell you, you can't stick a sling through it. I've tried. It doesn't work. Now, I did, being the goofy person that I am, I did stick a carabiner in there and then stuck the sling to that and it just looked like shit. So, obviously, that came back off. Let's see, what else do we have? Um, that's really pretty. Well, let's see. The bolt and bolt carrier was not MPI and marked. That doesn't mean shit to me, but I know a lot of people are really looking for that magnetic particle inspected, blah, 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 and they need all this stuff to make them, you know, feel like a man when they play with themselves at night, whatever it may be. I don't know. That's what other people may want. I personally don't give a shit one way or the other. If the gun cycles and it's reliable and it's relatively accurate, I'm happy. And this does. For the most part, I have had zero problems with it. Zero reliability or reliability problems, excuse me. Uh, it's got about 350, 400 rounds through it. Got it hot. Didn't have any problems with it. Accuracy didn't suffer. Um, it outshoots me, so I'm happy with that. I did happen to put a Magpul MOE grip on it just because the A2 just didn't fit the old lady's hand right, so she went with this. She liked this better. I personally prefer the A2 because I have small hands. In the uh, With this Magpul MOE grip, I have a hard time reaching the mag release. Just my own opinion. But uh, I guess other than that, that's really all I can think of that's bad. So, you know, the good thing is it's cheap, it's accurate. Where in the hell else can you get a stainless steel barrel for, you know, in my situation for 400 bucks or 440? Now I see that they've changed their website now, and if you want a stainless barrel, it bumps the price up 15 bucks. And 
hey, that you know, I don't see anything wrong with that. But uh, oh, and a side note: some people may have a problem with that stainless barrel because if you notice, sorry about the jiggling camera there, it's shiny. It's very shiny. Now, if you're like the old lady and she likes shiny stuff, that's cool. In my opinion, it looks like a polished nickel barrel when you walk down the street, or excuse me, not on the street, but if you're in the, in the woods or hiding or whatever it is you're trying to do, you have a chrome-plated barrel is what it looks like, but it just wasn't sandblasted or peened like most of the, you know, most of the other barrels. This is, it's not unfinished. It's just very, very smooth. And if you can hear it, you can actually hear where the lathe actually, you know, made its cut. But, uh, so they didn't go in and blast it or, you know, be blasted or whatever it is that they do to uh, take the shine down. But I don't have a problem with the shiny barrel. We wanted the stainless just so if we were out and about in a bug out situation, survival situation, we didn't have to worry about the barrel rusting. Wow, the wind's blowing like crazy out there. So, I guess that's pretty much all I have to say about this. It's well worth the money. I'm happy with it. The whole package all done and said with tax and magazines and everything. You get $515 into it. What? $515 into an AR. Where else can you do that? And be happy with the results. Or at least I'm happy with it. So, that's my review. You may differ. You know, everybody has their own opinions. And I understand that. And I don't care if you thumb it down because, oh, well, you know, I don't like your opinion. Well, fine. I don't care if you like my opinion or not. There's no other reviews of this rifle anywhere on YouTube, so that's why I put it up. My first overview video that I put up, I was the only person on YouTube that had put up a video on this thing. And I went from no views to 700 views in the course of a week. So obviously there's people looking for these things. You know, because nobody ever pays attention pays attention to my videos. I've got videos that have been up for three years and I have ten hits, you know. And probably most of those are me clicking on them, watching videos, because I entertain myself. But anyway, I'm rambling again as always. So if you're looking to spend around four fifty to five hundred dollars for a rifle kit, I don't see anything wrong with this. It has its faults, but it also has its good sides. I think it's well worth the money. So, on that note, I'm going to let you go. This is Fat Man Shooting, and maybe someday I can actually get some videos of this thing cycling through some rounds. So, well, I hope you enjoyed, and I guess, uh, as always, kiss my ass.